In this video, stay tuned to find out how we take huge blocks of stones like this and cut them down to create plinths for my sculptures. Welcome back to James Parker Sculpture. Since my last video, we've had almost 4,000 new subscribers and are well on our way to 10,000, which is absolutely fantastic. If you enjoy seeing beautiful things being made and you're not already subscribed, then go on and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell and allow notifications so that you never miss another video. Just arrived here at WL Watson and Sons, who are a stonemasons here just near St Andrews, about half an hour from home. I get quite a lot of my stone from here, and as you know, the plinths from my sculptures come in all shapes and sizes. Here at Watson's, they can take a piece of stone which weighs around eight tons and cut it down to produce all the different slabs that I might need to make a sculpture look at its best. I'll show you just shortly a piece of stone going on to the saw. First thing that they do is they cut it down to make it square and try and get as much out of the stone as possible. The first slice just takes off the end of the block and then after that they'll measure it down to get the slabs that they need in order to fill the orders. Just work out how to get the most out of the stone. Uh, just to get a good bit of face on it. Isn't it? I can put subtitles in if you want. <laughs> no. Obviously the blade's going to come straight down so he's just working out exactly where to position the piece of stone so that he can get the most possible out of this piece of stone. When you see the saw blade going, you'll not be able to see these teeth, but they're actually encrusted with diamond grit, just like some of the tools I used back in the workshop myself. Constantly water cooled as well, just so that they don't wear down so quickly. That's quite some saw blade. This will take about an hour to work its way through this piece of stone. So I'll go and show you some other things out in the yard while that's happening. In a similar way to the way the slate in the workshop that you see me working with so often varies in colour, sandstone also varies in colour as well. Here you can see this red piece of sandstone. Here we have a piece that's almost orange. And this piece here almost has a tinge of blue about it. Here you can see one of these huge blocks which has been cut completely down into slices and it will then be cut by a smaller saw into blocks in order to be used for building a house or something like that. Of course, when I'm working on a commission for a client or dealing with an order, most of my attention goes on designing the sculpture and thinking about where it might go in their garden. But a lot of thought also needs to be given to the plinth that it's going to sit on. Obviously, that makes a huge difference to the way that it's going to appear. There might be stone already in the garden or round about the property and introducing another stone of a different colour can sometimes jar a little bit with what's already there. So I do have to give quite a lot of thought to that aspect of the work. I do like to consider those things quite early on in the project because it can affect my approach to the commission quite a lot so it's really worth taking those things into consideration. In this huge block of stone here this is the kind of thing that the sawman will be looking at to determine where he's going to get the most out of that piece of stone and be most efficient. It takes about an hour to slice through the piece of stone which is on the saw and so he really doesn't want to waste his time cutting it where it's not going to be most efficient, most productive. On this piece of stone here you can see that there's a crack running here round to the other side of the stone round here and those are the kind of things that he'll be doing his best to avoid. This is what's known as a clay pocket and this is the kind of thing that can be found quite often in sandstone and I imagine it can be very frustrating to take a slice off and find one of these when you've done all that hard work. While I'm here, I have to show you these pieces of slate here. Ian Watson and his brother Ross have shown me these in the past for jobs that I'll be looking at. This is a piece of slate, and this is actually what snooker and pool tables are made out of. And you guys see me using slate so much at home in the workshop, but I wonder how many of you realise that this is what snooker, pool and billiard tables are actually made of. 
Here you can actually see one of the corner pockets on the edge of the piece of slate. I love to always keep these things in mind because you never know when you might need a big piece of slate for a job, an unusual job. Of course that might influence your design choices in the future. After the sawing process is complete, a skilled team of masons can dress the stone to achieve the desired finish. Really, I was just here today to collect these two pieces of stone, so I want to say a huge thanks to WL Watson & Sons for allowing me to record this video. If you enjoyed it, then please do me a huge favour and give it a big thumbs up. And until next time, wherever you are in the world, take care, and I'll see you again soon.